Hello Year 5, welcome to Thursday's math session. Now I hope that you had fun with your recap lesson yesterday. I hope you're feeling super secure in all your fabulous fractions knowledge. If you're not, don't worry, pop me or Mrs Elmore an email or pop along to a daily dropping session and we will demystify fractions for you. All right, moving on. Today we are looking at adding and subtracting fractions, which is actually very simple once you know what you're doing. But first off, can you have a go at these starter questions? Really think about which place value column you're going to need to move here and really use that improper fraction knowledge to help you here. What will it look like once you have changed it into an improper fraction? Okay, I'm going to reveal the answers in three, two, one. There we go. I hope you got that. 28 over 6, well that's 4 times 6, add an extra 4. Well done if you got those correct. Let's move on to the day's learning. Okay, now the first really crucial thing I'm going to tell you today, and it's going to be a really key help to you, is when adding fractions, they must have the same denominator. They must have the same denominator. That is a fact. OK, because if you're adding two fractions with different denominators, then the whole is going to be different and we won't be able to add them together properly. So here is an example using my favourite, the bar model. Here is a bar model to calculate two fifths plus four fifths. OK, and I've got my bar models. Now it's been split into five parts. Each bar model is split into five parts because my denominator is five, which means my whole has got five parts in it. Then I've coloured in two from this fraction, so two parts of my five, and I've stuck to the same bar model, and I've coloured in an extra four parts. And I've gone down to my next one because it's taken me over one whole. And because it's taken me over one whole, I know that I have one whole and then one fifth left over. And I could write that as an improper fraction by going 2 plus 4 equals 6 over 5, 6 fifths. So that is exactly the same thing because I've got 6 parts, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. And I've got 5 parts in my whole. So that's a top heavy or a mixed number fraction here. OK, here is your turn to have a go. Can you use a bar model to solve these calculations? OK, the key question is how many equal parts do you need to split your bar model into? Just like up here, I split it into five because my denominator was a five. How many do you need to split it in for each of these questions? I'm going to pause it and I'm going to put the answers up. And when I've unpaused it, then you will see if you are correct or not. OK, I'm going to unpause in three, two, OK, so here are the answers. I've put them in both forms. I've put them as mixed numbers and as improper fractions, apart from this one here, because six thirds is actually three and three. Well, that's two lots of three. So that is two. I hope you spotted that. OK. All right. What do we do then? If we know that our fractions have to have the same denominators when we're adding them, what can we do? when we have different denominators. What fraction knowledge will we need? Hopefully you're shouting at the screen, Miss Rutherford, we need to make them equivalent. We need to make sure they have the same denominators. How can we do that? Have a look at these two. We've got two thirds and one quarter. So we need to use our multiple knowledge to make sure that these have the same denominator. And what we're looking for is the lowest common multiple. And that means the multiple that is in both threes and fours and is the same, but at the lowest one, because then we can get there nice and quickly. So what I might do to help me out is I might write these out. So let me get my typing. Three is three, six, nine, 12, 15, 18, 21, 24, etc, 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 etc. 
okay and I can go for as long as I think I'm going to need and I'm going to come down here and I'm going to do exactly the same with my fours let's see I'm going to start on four eight twelve and I'm not going to go any further because I've already spotted a common multiple so both three and four have the common lowest multiple of 12. So how can we get there from our fractions? Well, three times four is equal to 12 and four times three is equal to 12. Interesting, can you spot any links or patterns there? Right then, so this one I'm going to be timesing times by four. And that's gonna give me eight over 12 that's it and this one i'm going to be times in by three and make sure you're doing the same to the numerator and the denominator and that's going to give me three over 12 oh i'll make that 12 really small so it doesn't go over my answer bit uh oh this is why you need to use your squares in your books isn't it guys okay so now i've got some fractions that are equivalent and it's much not equivalent so they're not equivalent but they do have the same denominator and that makes it easier to add them so i'm going to add them up and my denominator is going to be 12 because that's not going to change so my denominator is going to be 12 and then i add 3 and 8 which is going to be 8 9 10 11 so it's going to be 11 twelfths over there and that is how we add them up now if i wanted to i would simplify my answer but unfortunately i can't simplify this because the only common factor of 11 and 12 is one so i can't simplify it at all so my answer is going to be 11 twelfths okay right your turn can you add two fifths and three eighths together remember to use the lowest common multiple and you can list them out just like I did if you need to remind yourself of your times table knowledge. Okay, I will pause it. And when I unpause, there will be a magic answer there already. Okay, three, two, one. Okay, here are the answer, or is the answer, 31 fortieths. Okay, hopefully you've spotted that we could times this one by eight and times this one by I wonder if you've spotted that pattern this time. If you have, drop me an email. Okay, right then, here is two different ways to subtract using bar models. Now, again, top tip reminder, when subtracting fractions, they must have the same denominator. So that's something to put in your head. Okay, both, both of these show six sevenths take away four sevenths. So let's look at this one first. Here, I've got two bar models, two bar groups split into seven because that's my denominator and in this one I've colored in six of them and on the second one I've colored in four and then I've had a look at the difference between them and that is two over here I've used one hole here and I've colored in one two three four five six because that's our bigger number that's our bigger numerator and then I've crossed out four of them because that's the number I'm taking away. And I've been left with two. So my answer is going to be two sevenths. Okay. What do you think is the difference between these two methods? Have a think about it. Have a decide which one you think is going to be most useful, is going to be easiest for you to do. Okay. Again, thinking about how many equal parts you need to split your bar model into. Have a go with your favourite method or try one with one one and one with the other and see which one you prefer. Again, once I unpause, there will be some magic answers here. Okay, in three, two, one. Okay, so we've got one quarter left and you should have split your bar model into equal fours. And then we've got three eighths left and you should have split your bar model into eights because that was our denominator. Okay, what can we do with fractions with different denominators? Well, we can do exactly the same thing we did last time. We can make sure that our denominators are the same. Now, this one is already 12, and I know that 4 has a multiple of 12. 
I can't make this one smaller because I've only got one part on my numerator, so I'm going to have to make this one bigger. So I'm going to have to times this by three. So three times three equals nine. Four times three equals twelve. I'm going to cross that out so I don't get confused. Nine twelfths plus one twelfth is equal to ten twelfths. And remember, you can still use your bar models to help you out if you want to visualise it. OK, I'm going to pause again. Let's see if you will get the same answer as me here. Now, your factors or multiple knowledge is going to be helpful for you here. What do you notice about these two fractions? OK, I hope you managed to work out that we could times this one by four to make the denominator 16 or sixteenths and added them together and hopefully you also spotted that we could convert this improper fraction into a mixed number as well. Okay now we've got a cheeky little word problem. Now today's problem and reasoning, reasoning and problem solving is all around word problems so hopefully we can use bar models to help us out with those. Okay Mo and Tommy each have a jug of milk. Mo's jug contains five sevenths litres less milk than Tommy's. The total milk in the two jugs is three litres and two sevenths. How much milk does Mo have? Okay, so the key information here is, that's it. They each have a jug of milk. Mo's has 5.7 litres less milk than Tommy's. The both milks all together have 3.27 litres. So we need to work out how much milk is in Moe's jug. And I think to find that, we're also going to have to find out how much milk is in Tommy's jug. We know that all together they have 3.27 litres. OK, so I've represented it using a bar model here to help me. I know that Mo has less than Tommy. So Tommy has the greater bar. And that all together there are 3 litres and 2 sevenths in the whole thing. So what can I do now? Have a think. Well, if I do this, Mo's jug contains five sevenths litres less milk than Tommy's, which is the same as saying that Tommy's has five sevenths more than Mo's. So now what can I do? Well, I know that this bit is going to be equal to 3 and 2 sevenths take away 5 sevenths. Now, it's probably going to be easier for me if I convert this one into an improper fraction, in a top heavy fraction. So let's do that first. Right, I've got 3 times 7, which is 21. Add in my 2, so that's 23 over 7. So I've got 23 over 7, take away 5 over 7, and that's going to give me 18 sevenths. So now I know that this bit is 18 sevenths. What do you notice about the bit here between Mo and Tommy? They're identical, right? So if I take this and divide it by 2, if I make sure that I share it out equally between them, I know that I'm going to find out how much milk Mo has. So 18 divided by 2, nice and simple, that's going to be 9. So Mo has 9 sevenths. And I can check it again by doing the inverse. And I can say, right, Mo has 9 sevenths. Tommy has 9 sevenths. That's it. And then Tommy also has an extra five sevenths here and I can add those all up have a go see if that comes to the correct thing you might have to exchange it back into a mixed number okay here is your varied fluency today it is also on the website in the word document with the answers as well for you to check your working today all right have a great day and have a look at the word problems and there's also an add and subtract maze for you to try out today so go up there and have a look at those the trick is to solve them all and follow the maze through the ones that equal to 10 exactly 
Have a fantastic Thursday, guys. Bye.